But what about the people that say that, uh, you know, experience is a thing and how De Leon, which I think he's your more, most fierce competitor in the sense of, you know, the other people running and taking away progressive votes. What, like people say he has experience as, as the Senate pro tempore. Like, how do you respond to something like that when people just assume that you need to have a title before you can even run for something like Senate? Yeah, well, I have a title. It's policy analyst, and it's right at the top of the list on the on the voter guide. So uh, <laughs> you don't really need a title to run. And judging by his performance at the LA Field of Burn debate, where he didn't seem to know anything, and people keep asking me, "Who is that guy on your right?" He doesn't seem to know anything. And when it comes to having the title of President Pro Tem, which he couldn't actually put on the ballot because it wasn't his title at the time, he just has state senator. That doesn't go very far because remember, we're in a statewide race and he represented one small area of the state. A lot of people there, but one area of the state. So when you become Senate pro tem of a statewide legislature, that doesn't matter because the people around the rest of the state don't even know who you are. They don't pay attention to politics. So we're in a we're in a bubble where we actually know what that means and you know on paper and what their powers are and that they're head of the Senate, but Outside that building, outside our bubble, no one knows. So actually, he hasn't got a lot of traction that he thought he would get. Um, one poll came out that had me at 2% and him at 5%, trailing a couple of Republicans and I believe other Democrats or independents. So it's really, he for all the money that he spent and put into this, he really doesn't have as much traction. And I think we actually will be surprised um, on June 5th at his, his lack of performance. I could be completely wrong. Maybe there's a Kevin DeLeon undercurrent going on that no one's seen. But for, to this date, I mean, there's some progressives out there pushing him. But the mainstream, the, the public, I highly doubt that they're really going to go full on for Kevin DeLeon. What is the argument for some of these progressives? And I know you've seen them uh, in some of the chats we've had on Facebook and whatnot. And some of the people we know have gone crazy. But what is the argument, the fact that that there is no path to victory for you or Allison and... Uh, you should just get out of the way. But while some progressives are saying, no, just because DeLeon might have a better chance to win, you should be support supporting a progressive no matter what until the runoff. So my, uh, my comments are, I'm very open on this subject. And that is if we back and support and elect more corporate candidates, they're going to do the same exact thing as we've seen in the past. So Kevin DeLeon during his state Senate runs has accepted money from basically everyone including like Chevron, you know, big pharma companies, oh, yeah. oil companies, and, and companies like Raytheon. So as a state senator, you don't have a direct impact on going to war or not, but at the same time, they have their foot in the door into your future offices now because you accepted that payment. So that's what you avoid by voting for a non-corporate candidate. So, and saying someone doesn't have a chance or does have a chance, one that's ridiculous in a top two primary in a democratic state, Two, um, we won't know who has a chance or not until they poll fairly and they poll accurately and include everyone in the poll. So the one poll that they did include me in, I was within striking distance, almost within the margin of error of Kevin DeLeon. So if that poll was accurate, then that's how close we are to actually being able to beat Kevin DeLeon and get into the top two. So, I mean, to, to argue he has some special advantage is, is kind of ludicrous at this point still. Um, when they polled just him versus Feinstein and no other, or what's it called, no option or undecided or whatnot, then he would come in at like last year at like 31% or not 31%. Um, Feinstein would come in like 47%. He would come in at like 21%. His poll really, uh, versus Feinstein, his polling has actually fallen. And those people haven't gone to Feinstein. They've gone to undecided. So people, as the more they learn about Kevin DeLeon, the less they want to elect him. And when they started polling for Republicans, it polled from the undecideds and he kept falling down in the polls. So uh, the more people learn about Kevin DeLeon, the more he realize he's just more of the same. So why even bother? <coughs> the uh, far right online um, calls him an anchor baby and says that they'll never vote for him. And they also say that if that goes to the main election, they'd rather vote Feinstein than Kevin DeLeon. So this is how serious uh, hatred these people have for, you know, for minorities, one, and for him specifically. Because, I mean, when it comes to the issues that they care about, 
He's the same as Feinstein, only he his parents came here illegally, so they're against him because of that. So it's like an extra step against him from those people. Now, do we need those people to win the general election? I don't think so. Do they really have a say at the end of the day? Maybe in the primary, depending if if Republicans get their get their stuff together and can actually back one candidate, but they can't. They proved that this week and at their convention, they didn't couldn't back anyone for governor. They couldn't decide, and they couldn't back anyone for senate. They couldn't decide. So at the end of the day, they haven't formed a coalition or cohesion or coalesce behind one candidate. So it's all up in the air again. So Republicans are going to split their vote, and they're going to basically undermine their own chances of getting a candidate in. So at the end of the day, this race is still very wide open. Well, let me ask you this much. How, how did you're saying that De Leon was not that popular uh, and he's, his, his unpopularity is growing actually. How did he manage to get the majority of the delegates to vote for him then? Um, he had a very good operation at the convention. Um, to get people to vote for him. He has he has very good operatives within the party and there are movers and shakers within the party. But if you'll notice the uh, the inner party, you know, delegate vote versus the party or the outside vote of general public are completely opposite from each other. So basically what you have is kind of like a, a disturbing, you know, Clinton Clinton esque, you know, pushing one candidate forward within the party. And at the end of the day, he still couldn't seal, seal the uh, Democratic endorsement. So at the end of the day, they haven't decided. So when the Democrats sent out their postcards of who was endorsed, it doesn't have U.S. Senate on there because they couldn't decide. So there's a lot of races where they were undecided. So it actually is not going to help him out at all that he got 54 percent to her 37 or whatever when the general public has no clue you know, what even happened that weekend, and the general public doesn't necessarily even know that there was a Democratic convention. Correct. So, I the mean, delegates it, are a small number. Exactly. So if, if, you're, if you're saying like a couple thousand votes is going to throw the state election, then you have to reframe your argument of who can win and who can't. Mm. I think I made a meme for that one. I, I can send it to you. <laughs> 